How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Therapy Range. Today, we're going to have us a little discussion on yet another victory for pro-Second Amendment gun lovers here in the United States. We can do this, but we can only do this together. Together! Teamwork, bitches! It's time to shut up and shoot. Go! Alright, here we go. Mad Tech Industries, the official Cerakoter for Therapy Range. Alright guys, so let's jump into this. Um, as you many may well very well know, the ATF and the gun leftist gun grabbers have been getting their heads kicked in at every turn they come across. And the, the cycle continues to keep moving forward for us pro-Second Amendment gun-loving uh, constitutional Americans. Uh, a Florida district judge just ruled, well, it's not just been, it's a couple of days old now, but it's been so cold here in Ohio, I couldn't get out here into the studio to do any recording. It was just too damn cold. But a Florida district judge ruled that carrying firearms into the federal post office even though it's not a federal body, is uh, unconstitutional. Let's dig into it, shall we? From Reuters, a federal judge in Florida on Friday ruled that the U.S. law that bars people from possessing firearms in post offices is unconstitutional, citing a landmark U.S. Supreme Court ruling from 2022 that expanded gun rights. Thank you, Bruin decision. The U.S. District Judge Catherine... Mizell, an appointee of a of the Republican for, former Republican President Donald Trump in Tampa, reached that conclusion in dismissing part of an indictment charging a postal worker with illegally possessing a firearm while he was at work. So that part of his charges got dismissed, which is cool. Let's dig into this a little bit more, shall we? Uh, Mizell said that the charge violated Emanuel a a Ayla's right to keep and bear arms under the U.S. Constitution, Second Amendment, saying a blanket restriction on firearm possession in post offices is incongruent with the American tradition of firearm regulation. Furthermore, Mizell said that while, post office, while the post office has existed since the nation's founding, federal law did not bar guns in government buildings until 1964 and the post office until 1972. There's no historical practice dating back to the 1700s that justified the ban, she says. Mazel said that allowing the federal government to restrict visitors from bringing guns into government facilities as a condition of admittance would allow it to abridge the right to keep and bear arms by regulating it into practically into practical non non-existence. So, the skinny of that means is that you can now carry your firearms into the into the post office without being in fear of committing a crime. Now, before we get into this too much more, most of us don't really give a shit about being able to carry a firearm into the post office. At least I don't. I carry my gun everywhere I go with a couple of exceptions. I don't take my blaster into the school. I don't take my blaster into court. Uh, mainly because you, you, you get some real big boy problems going on uh, if you decide to do those things and get caught. So instead of, uh, instead of toying with fate, I choose to just go ahead and take, uh, take my blaster out of the holster and leave it in the car. If I got to go to a place like that, we just drop our mag out, clear the weapon, easy peasy, lock the gun in the glove box, throw the magazine in the console out of sight, of course, and uh, we're good to go. So I just leave it in the car. But now we can lawfully take our blasters into the post office. So what does that actually mean? I don't give a shit. It doesn't really mean a whole lot. But the precedence that is being set by this district court ruling opens the floodgates for more and more unconstitutional gun legislation to be stricken from our records. Um, over the last 30 years, 50 years, 100 years, us conservatives, us, us gun-loving, uh, God-fearing American conservatives have been trying to meet halfway. We met halfway in 1934. 
We met halfway in 1980 something. We've met halfway over and over and over. And the gun grabbers just keep grabbing and grabbing and grabbing. And if they think that we'll let go of it, they'll grab that too. So it's, it's very reassuring to this patriot to see our court system finally doing what we've all been screaming for 50 years. I mean, I'm not, I'm almost 50, but I've been screaming at my whole adult life. Life is why are, I mean, if we have this constitution that says this, then why are these firearms regulations in place the way they are? I can't wait for the cats with the deep enough pockets to go after the NFA. The National Firearms Act needs to go away because there's a so much unconstitutional behavior written in that. There's no reason why I shouldn't be able to have a machine gun. There's no reason why I shouldn't be able to have a suppressor. There's no reason why I shouldn't be able to have a short-barreled rifle. You know, literally, the difference in a short-barreled rifle and a regular rifle is one inch. 16 inches, it's a rifle. 15 inches, it's a freaking short-barreled rifle. They perform no different, but because one's this much shorter than the other one, it's a federal felony to be in possession of it. Um, we're all sick of the, the ATF coming after the bump stocks, the pistol braces, the FRT triggers, uh, frames and receivers, solvent traps. We're done with this shit, guys. Leftist gun grabbers, if you get the chance to witness this video, understand we're done with this shit. We're not playing your bullshit games anymore. We're coming for our rights and we're not going to accept anything less than that. Kudos for the judges that are standing up for what they took their oaths to stand up for. And kudos to Donald Trump. Not because he was the greatest guy out there to protect our Second Amendment because he wasn't. I know all you Donald Trump nut swingers out there don't want to hear this shit, but he did sick the ATF on American gun owners. Going after the bump stocks. Then came the freaking pistol braces. Then came the frames and receivers. Then came the FTRs. Now the solvent traps. That's all inspired by the actions of Donald Trump. All right. Now, on the reverse side of that, all right, thank you, Donald Trump, for stacking the courts with all of these conservative pro-Second Amendment judges. That is going to make the difference. While there's a lot of people out there that will want to hate on Donald Trump for saying to take the guns first and then do the, the evaluations, and for sending the ATF on us for, for the FTRs and the bump stocks and the pistol braces, I understand why he did what he did. It was a strategic move. I'm going to give them this little thing that they want right here. But over here, while they're not looking, they're looking over here. See, look over here. See what this hand's doing? This hand's over here doing this. But this hand's over here stacking the Supreme Court, stacking the district courts. So it didn't matter what he was doing on this hand over here, even though it may have appeared that he was opening up the floodgates for the ATF to come after us. I believe that it was a strategic move by placing all of these conservative people in the courts he knew that they were going to unfuck what he was doing over here to appease the leftists. All right. I mean, that's part of the political game is that you've got to pet the dog with one hand while you're stroking it with the other. And that's kind of what he did to the leftist gun grabbers there. He patted them on the head. He's like, okay, okay, we're going to do this. We're going to we're going to take those bump stocks away. We're going to take those pistol braces away. But I'm going to stack the court system up over here with all of these judges that are going to squash these cases as soon as they come to court. Was it annoying? Was it unconstitutional? Probably. Probably. More than likely it was. But the means seem to have justified the end. The end results is that the courts are throwing all this trash out. And now not only are we getting the rights back that, that were taken from us, we're getting more. We're going to get more. So if you can carry a firearm into the post office, you're going to find yourself here in the near future being able to carry a firearm more places. You know, constitutional carry is becoming a thing. One, I, I truly do see in the near future that constitutional carry is going to be a nationwide thing to where all 50 states will be allowed to take part in it because the Supreme Court says so. <laughs> Fuck Joe Biden. But uh, all right, guys, that's what I wanted to get off my chest today. It's no longer illegal to carry your firearm into the post office. Cool beans. 
not that big a deal, but it was definitely worth getting on here and talking shit for 10 minutes. And uh, I truly do appreciate everybody that sticks around and watches the show that comes in and leaves comments. You guys are all awesome. Be sure to go check out the No Drill Cheek Rest at nodrillcheekrest.com. This is a product that I make right here in my shop. 100% American made, 100% American sourced product. Uh, go check out the website. You can find out more about the product, watch some product reviews from some other content creators besides the ones that I put up. There's a couple videos that I made, and then I've got like seven other videos about this product made by other content creators that you're welcome to check out and uh, decide for yourself if this is the product that will help elevate your shooting game to where you need to be. Until next time. Live your lives to the fullest because anything less is an injustice to yourself and every single person around you. I'm Paul Riley. This is Therapy Range. I appreciate everything that you guys do and for all that you do, but we can still do more. Stay free, America, if you can.